Joe, and today I'm going to explain to you how to use the Linux grep command. Grep means get regular expression in print, but what it's generally used for is finding strings or substrings within a file. It's very handy for that in Linux. So the standard command is grep, and then the string you're looking for, in this case we'll look for world, in file name, hello. And then it will return every line where there's a match every line where it finds this pattern or this word in this file. So in this case it found one line where there was a match and it returned hello world, that's the line. And we can search multiple files. We can do, let's say grep, in this case our string is just a number, eight, and we'll search in two files, zip and stock. So we can just add as many file names on here as we want and it'll search for this string inside of each of these files. Uh, when you search multiple files, it, re it tells you the name of the file that it found it in. In this case, it found in zip, it found this line. And in stock, these are some stock quotes, it found these four matches. So it returns the entire line where it found a match, where it found an eight. Now if we want to search every file in this current folder, let's see what we have here is uh, five different files. If we want to do grep is and then star, we can search every file in this folder and it returns each line in the word file it found this, these matches in the zip file it found Hollister. Now we can also ignore case so let's say we do grep line star which will search for the word line in every file in our current folder. It only found matches in the word file and it found these three matches those three lines. So if we do a grep dash i it will ignore case so it runs exactly the same search except now it's going to ignore case so it finds a couple more matches look here we found an all uppercase line and here it found a couple of lines where line is capitalized so the dash i is one of the most useful operators to add on to the grep function if you want to ignore case in your search and we can do an inverse find let's say we do grep line word we get this result and we can do grep dash v line word that's searching for the word line in the file word. Okay, just to be clear. So this is going to do an inverse. In other words, everywhere, every line where there's not a match. So it should return every line except these three. Yeah. So the word line does not appear. Now we didn't use the dash i option. We could also redo this search and add an i there. And what that does is ignore case. So in other words, it found a match on line where it was all uppercase and so it inverted that. In other words, it doesn't, doesn't give us this line back. This is the only line of text that doesn't contain the word line in this file name. Now if we just maybe want to find all the file names that contain a match, we don't care about seeing the line themselves, but we just want to see all the file names. So we can do grep-l, that'll give us back the file names that contain the string 88. And there's only one, it's number. Right? Now if we don't include this dash l, if we just search for grep 88 star, it gives us back the line of text, including the name of the file. And if you want the count of matches, how many times a match is found in that file, uh, we could do grep dash C for count. And then let's just search for a simple uh, text here, three, the number three, and we'll search in every file. So that will give us the count in every file of lines where the number three appears. So in hello, it doesn't appear at all. It only has hello world, so there's no numbers. In number, it appears five times. In the words, in uh, stock, there are two lines that have the letter number three. Now, this is not the total number of times the number three appears. It's the number of lines that the number three appears on. What we're counting is lines. So if you want to search recursively within all the subdirectories, you can do grep dash r which will do a recursive search and then we're going to search for 945 and we want to search in all files that start with z so there's only one file that starts with z and that's zip and we don't actually have any subdirectories but that is how you do it you use the dash r operator to search recursively within all subdirectories then if you want to search for a non-regular string let's say a string with with blank spaces in it or some odd characters you can use a uh, well, we'll use grep-i to ignore case, and then let's search for Los Gatos, and then we'll search uh, in star, so all files. This is going to find everything that has Los Gatos letters in it with this space in it, and it's going to ignore case. 
And so here we get one hit in the zip file. We find the, the zip code for those gatos. So anytime you have any odd characters other than just alphanumerics, so a blank space, a star, or anything else, you have to use quotation marks. But if you just have a continuous block of alphanumerics, you can just leave off the quotations. And if you want to search for whole words only, you can use grep-w. We'll search for whole words of one, two, three. And we found one. So the period is considered the end of the word, right? Because that's punctuation. So this is considered a whole word here. And if we repeat that search without the dash W, we do grep123 star. It finds everything with 123 in it, including where 123 is a substring of another word. So here are 1234 or a long string of characters with 123 in the middle of it. So the dash W operators for whole words only. If you want to show more context around the matching lines, you can do grep A. This, by the way, is case sensitive. All these operators are case sensitive. So uh, dash uppercase A, and then how many lines do you want to show? Two. So it'll show two lines after a match. So if we're searching for FB in the folder in the file stock, so we found Facebook, it returned that line, but it also returned the two lines immediately following that. And then we can do the same thing with dash B if we want to show before two lines, right? That shows the two lines immediately previous to the matching line. And we can also use the dash C if we want to see lines both before and after. I'm going to change this to one. We'll see one line before and one line after the Facebook match. So here's FB's match, and then we see the Cisco and IBM just before and just after that. So A, B, and C again are all case sensitive you have a space and then a number and it will show you the lines immediately preceding or, and or following the match lines. Now another nice function in grep is you can use regular expressions. I'm not going to go into detailed regular expressions here but I will have a subsequent video to cover that in more depth. Right now I just want to show you, let's say you want to find lines that start with a number. right? So you have to use quotes because we're going to use other than just regular alphanumerics here. We use this up arrow, and then that, that means starts with. We have to use square brackets, 0 to 9, and then close square brackets and close quotes. And then we can search for all files that contain lines that start with numbers 0 to 9. So all, files that, all lines that start with a number. And you can see it gives you the file name, number, and this line starts with a number. And so here we have something in Word. There's one line that starts with the number 4. In zip, it starts with a number 9. It's only looking at the very first character in each line and comparing it to 0 to 9. Is it a number? So this is the first or starts with operator. And there's a whole ton of different detailed stuff you can get into with regular expressions. Like I said, I'll cover that in another video, but just to give you a taste of what you can do. Now, if you want to find files that contain uh, two separate matches, right, or two different strings, and you want to use the AND function, right, I'm looking for a, a file that contains the number 5 and the substring RE. So let's do grep-I, we'll ignore case, and we'll search for RE, and then star, which means every file. So that gives us back three matches. We want to narrow down our search to ones that also contain only a 5, right? So we can pipe that into another grep command and then grep for five. And here we get only two matches. We had three matches up here. The VM stock quote didn't, doesn't have a five in it, but these two lines do. So we can use this pipe and basically it works like an and because we're piping it into another grep, fi grep function that searches for something else and it narrows down our result. So that's an easy way to do an and with the grep function. If you want to combine a file search, this is very common in Linux. You want to search for a list of files according to, let's say, the name of the file or when a file was modified or whatever. And then you want to pipe that into grep and you want to search for contents of the file. Grep is used to search for contents of the file. We can do find dot and then dash name. So dot will search in the current directory. Dash name, we want to find everything that has a zip in the name. So uh, we'll just look for star zip star because we don't remember the name of the file. And then we'll pipe that to, here's a little trick that's not very obvious. You have to use xargs. And the reason why I'll explain in a second, but let's see. So the grep command we're going to use is grep-i fremont. 
So we're looking for the zip code of Fremont, right? So we want to find this file called zip. We don't know where it is, but we know it's in this folder somewhere. And then we want to search for rep, in ignoring case, Fremont. So we're looking for the Fremont zip code. And the reason we have to use this XARGS is the find is going to output a list of file names. So we don't want to search the list of file names. We want to search the contents of the file. And XARGS tells rep to do that. It says, hey, look in the contents of the file. Don't look just in the file name. And when we do that, we get back the zip code for Fremont. So you have to pipe it to XARGS grep. And you'll notice we don't have a list of files after our grep command here because we don't need that. It's already The list of files is already piped in. So I hope this video gives you a good feel for how useful the grep command is and what kinds of stuff you can do with it. You really have to practice using grep to learn to use it. So the more hands-on practice you get in Linux using grep, you're, the quicker you're going to learn how useful this feature is. And here's a little one-page summary of all the commands we covered in grep and all the different operators. So again, keep in mind, these are case sensitive. These are all lowercase on the top, and A, B, and C are uppercase. In the end, you have to replace with a number. Uh, please leave any feedback below. If you like this, give me the thumbs up and click subscribe. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.